Jig Jindo Tapi Chimni Chimni Barapto, Jean de Givi to La Sundi Samni or Neso. Dear, mm, dear Sundi Sam Jean Givi to La Raton in Rumbo Malomber Mumbrishi Barnachi, the Zon numbers of Bacon to Separature to Tipo Bergimachata to be Jund and the Jones of Smanji Jerboyons and Yaman in the Jam Mumbrishi Baton, Zonji to Chund and the Jones of Smanji Jerboti, Chuchin Colora to Kuru Jund, Verti Karachi, Vardo, and Jesu Kordo, He Wombo Tears are the Gerno Dadi. Tambichu yons of Zon Alam Mumbrus, Zon Be, Simjin, Shia Tavachu, Laname Bayan, Dobber Changel, Lev Shirmer Dobber Kirito, Trots of Tokyo, Church, 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 He won both the tea, tea, and I understand the Egyptian and Kurlojer, the airport Dr. Yen de Carazambo and Dola, Santi Stone, Sam Richard, Dev Geno, Santi Lopper Tassilla, Soba, Mundo, Shunga, Lama, Nam Jam Jam Richard, Kuranji, Lasoba, Namzuk, Tukavart, Santi, Namzuk, 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 He won both eats in a tea dinner, Jordan, the Tizens of Bashmanji, Jerbo Tampa, Chus, on what on Jerbo Dalti, you share a tears and Bashmanjam to Chuchi, the Termotago, the Chichina. He won both eats, eh, Tina, Jerbo Dalti, you share a chirto, Nati, Nati, Tina, Jerbo Dalti, you share a chirto, he won both, Namjandi, young the third river shattered, he won both, just an attention of Banal and Chopana. Chupunam Chujim Chopanam Churiono, Chodon, Tambatam, Chok Rapton, Tianobatam, Lamadam, Laname Pawal, he won both Testavena, Mala, Zanzangam Chu, Mamchutper, Chujim Chopa, Chujim Chopim Chuchu, Mala Zanzang of Tartan, Marshes, Chuchi of Tartan, the Rumro, Rumorish, Rumor Chishu. Today's class is on the Vimalakirti Sutra, and today we will then get into the second half of this particular chapter, and then next class will be on the 27th. The 26th, which is the Monday, is in fact the protectors, is in fact the protectors' day. Uh, over here, celeb protectors uh, celebration over here in Larongar. Uh, so we have no class on the 26th, which is 26, uh, which is the Monday, and then uh, we'll move the our last class on the Malakirti Sutra on the 27th. That is the Tuesday. Is that right? Am I right? In fact, we will finish Vimalakirti Sutra um, next week, and uh, we'll have uh, in total 66 classes, which is a quite an auspicious number for uh, for Chinese. And uh, the ornament of Mahayana Sutra was 111 classes in total. And uh, Lotus Sutra was 201. 
and uh, the Nonjo or Words of My Perfect Teacher class was uh, 144 classes, and four, as you know, is uh, is means death in. Chinese language, but it's good that uh, I'm still alive and uh, you're still alive and listening. Uh, how about Lotus Sutra, the Lotus Sutra? Anyone? 63? Quite similar to this one. This one's 66 and the other one's 63 classes in total. Okay. How about uh, Suragama Sutra? <laughs> so let's continue. The second half of this chapter is um, the chapter on Dharma offering. And in this chapter, previously, we've already studied that Indra came to the Buddha and uh, started talking about the merit of Dharma offering. And uh, he would protect and bless the ones who uh, would make a Dharma offering. And over here, uh, also he talked about the uh, medicine, but uh, the medicine king Taragata, <coughs> where the moon canopy prince went to ask about uh, medicine king Taragata to ask about the merit or how to make offering of the Dharma. As you know, moon canopy is the son of use of the universal monarch a jewel canopy and uh, you know and the jewel canopy the universal monarch all made offering to the Taragaras for five kalpas and asked his sons to do the same out of the 1000 sons of universal monarch and jewel canopy moon canopy sat alone and I started thinking, might there be some offering that would be exceeding even the wealth offering to the Taragatas? And because of the Buddha's numinous power, then a celestial being's voice was heard from the space and started saying that a good man, the offering of the Dharma, surpasses all the other offerings. And if you would want to know what Dharma offering is, you should go to the Medicine King Taragata, and he would explain to you what Dharma assembly is, uh, what Dharma offering is. So Prince Moon Canopy went to Medicine Taragata. And he first bowed to the feet of Medicine King Buddha and stood to one side and addressed to the Buddha, saying that, world honored one, of all the suffering, of all the offerings, offering of the Dharma are superior. What are offerings of the Dharma then? So what is it? Could you explain to me? Some people probably don't know what a Dharma offering is either. People know what offering is, but what is Dharma offering? Out of all the offerings, the Dharma offering is the most superior. So the moon canopy prince went to the medicine king Taragata and asked him this question. And then the Buddha medicine king said, Good men, offering of the Dharma are those made to the profound sutras explained by the Buddha. In fact, the Buddhas of three times who expounded the profound sutras, the Mahayana sutras, the sutras that taught the ultimate truth, such kind of offering are the offering of the Dharma. And in all the worlds, these kind of teachings or this kind of, uh, of uh, Dharma teachings are difficult to believe in to, uh, and difficult to accept. At first, for worldly beings, the 
Mahayana teachings are very difficult to believe in. There are two types of two types of people who believe in the Mahayana Sutra. Either you're either the person is very stupid because they would they're very gullible, or it is for the kind of audience who are extremely uh, smart with lots of wisdom so that through their wisdom they will believe in the Mahayana Sutra. In fact, there are people who believe but they can they have a difficulty to accept. They can they encounter difficulty to completely accept such teachings in their hearts and minds. Sometimes we see that there are people who have a great belief in the Mahayana teaching, but uh, they have a difficult they have a hard time to practice and uh, completely accept it wholeheartedly. And even if you can practice it, then the teaching of uh, Mahayana are subtle and uh, difficult to see. There are people who have faith and uh, who practice often, but can they then enter the subtle and uh, profound realization then? It is very difficult because there are people who practice for a decade or two. It, they still do not <coughs> receive such kind of uh, realization. In fact, such kind of Mahayana teaching surpassed the ordinary thinking, the ordinary uh, discriminative thoughts and practice of normal, of mundane beings. And such teaching is pure and without defilement. They cannot be attained with only discriminative thinking. Unlike how the mundane beings would use some logic and some discriminative thinkings and then they continuously to think, to research and uh, contemplate. And uh, just through these, mundane beings cannot attain such profound teachings. Uh, according to Kumar Jiva, he said that the wisdom can be uh, attained through uh, samadhi, but not through discriminative thinking. So in order to receive the Mahayana teaching, you have to practice meditation often so that you can calm your mind. And when you develop wisdom through such a way, you'll be able to enter into the profound ocean of uh, Mahayana wisdom. Another way of receiving such a profound teaching is through the blessings of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. You'll be able to receive such profound teaching. Or if you have great devotion, According to uh, uh, according to Tara Tantra Shastra, it also says that you can attain or you can attain the realization of ultimate uh, uh, truth through devotion solely as well. Other than that, other than the previously stated methods, it's very difficult to attain such wisdom. There are so many Western and Eastern scholars who have studied the emptiness as well as Buddha nature aspect of uh, Buddhism, but they cannot uh, attain any uh, further understanding of these, even after studying these uh, for, uh, these kind of subjects uh, for a decade or two. Why is that? It is because that even though they've spent lots of time in terms of their research and study, but they don't really have a sense of devotion and belief. Therefore, their research and study cannot really broke that barrier and uh, that boundary. Though they visited many temples, monasteries, and so on, did many uh, research, but uh, without a devotion, and without samadhi, they won't be able to attain such wisdom. And they're contained in the storehouse of the dharma of the bodhisattvas. In fact, such kind of storehouse or treasure trove of dharma is not the state that could be realized of, uh, uh, from or of the mundane beings. Rather, it is of the bodhisattvas. 
They're sealed by the seal of Dharani and uh, eloquence and so on. Just as once you um, seal a document, you're, you can't change it anymore. So it, it is sealed by the seal of Dharani. Through the Vajra words of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, then you'll be able to. So that is the great Dharma. Uh, just look at the Heart Sutra. Why is it so well known and so popular the whole worldwide? It is because that it is sealed by the Dharani of Bodhisattvas and Buddhas. And once they take to the stages of non retrogression, non retrogression. Yesterday, that child also cried out. But once you took that child to the door, uh, the child stopped crying. So same as yesterday. Maybe the mother stayed by the door just in case if the child cries. So to take one to the stage of non-retrogression, because such kind of dharani is uh, to uh, such kind of uh, uh, dharma would uh, take you to the non-retrogression and uh, to the accomplishment of six perfections, the six paramitas, the generosity uh, precepts, uh, samadhi, wisdom, and uh, so on. The punctuation over here in Chinese language is rather very, it's actually uh, very weird. I think the person who did the punctuation must have made mistakes without carefully, um, without carefully going through the whole uh, content. They discriminate the meaning the good meanings. So the Dharma has such kind of ability. The kind of teachings that you receive, uh, such as uh, uh, finance and eco economics, could probably then uh, increase some of the desire in your mind. But uh, the Mahayana teaching, in fact, uh, could help you to gain such discriminative, uh, which could gain such a discriminative ability to discriminate the good meanings. And they accord with the Dharma of Bodhi. They are supreme among the host of sutras and induct one into great sympathy and compassion. They transcend the affairs of a host of maras and various heterodox views. So after studying Mahayana teaching, then the, sen the heart of compassion would naturally increase and the various heterodox views would naturally decrease. If you have solid wisdom, if you have um, the stability of wisdom, rather, then such kind of power will be able to transcend and will be able to subjugate various hosts of Maras and, and uh, heterodox views. According to a collection of Zen master, Yung Jia, uh, he said, a person of unshakable wisdom can never be influenced by Maras. So Mahayana teaching asks us to then also go in accord with the Dharma of causes and conditions because uh, it doesn't go beyond uh, this kind of, uh, 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 does not go beyond the cause and conditions, the, uh, the uh, norms of cause and conditions. And they're without self, without a person, without session being, without lifespan. They teach the three emancipations of uh, emptiness, signlessness, uh, wishlessness, and uh, non-activation. In Tibetan text, it also talks about uh, non-birthlessness uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, non-deceiving and so on. According to Master Huiyuan or Master Kuiji in, their, in one of their commentaries, it also stated that in the following part, it talks 
the previous part talks about the characteristics of Mahayana teachings, and uh, the next part then talks about the uh, the abilities or capacities of uh, Mahayana Dharma. Today, the teaching is a little bit difficult. I hope you persist anyhow. Uh, and it over here talks about and they are able to make sentient beings take their seat in the place of enlightenment and turn the wheel of the Dharma, just like Shakyamuni Buddha took his seat at the Vajra seat in India under the Bodhi tree and uh, um, attained enlightenment and uh, turn the wheel of dharma. Some of the uh, Buddhas or enlightened ones would uh, turn the wheel of dharma for three times, uh, just like uh, the Shakyamuni Buddha. And they're praised by all the gods, dragons, demonic spirits, uh, such as yakshas, and uh, also Gandharvas, and so on. When the Buddha turns the wheel of dharma, of course, the the gods, dragons, and uh, yakshas, and uh, Gandharvas, uh, as well as some uh, uh, other beings who would naturally praise the Buddha. Uh, for a mundane being who turns the wheel of Dharma, then I think we should rejoice wholeheartedly and uh, with a very pure heart. They're able to make sentient beings to enter the storehouse of Buddha Dharma. Over here, it talks about the doctrine that is the Tripitaka and uh, the 12 volumes of teachings. So that is, those are the doctrines, uh, do, uh, Dharma doctrines. And uh, they accommodate all types of wisdom of uh, worthiness and sages. Also, to attain the deep wisdom of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So that part talks about a realization. So there are two types of teaching included in Buddha Dharma. That is then the doctrine and uh, the realization. So the two aspects. Just as it is said, the Buddha gave two types of teachings. One is uh, the doctrine and uh, the doctrine can be attained uh, through listening and, uh, and contemplation. And uh, the second one is realization. That can be attained through practice. This is quoted from Abhidharma. So the true doctrine or the propagation of true doctrine is uh, through giving teachings on the Dharma as well as listening contemplation on the Dharma. And uh, then the realization aspect of uh, Buddha Dharma could be attained uh, through practice. So if you were if you were to attain such realization, you would have to then engage in practice just as uh, how the previous masters uh, carried out their life. I think people nowadays <coughs> cannot really distinguish the truth, the, the Dharma, and uh, the heterodox view. A doctor, I know, often say that I, uh, it, I, I, I don't know, I can hardly dis, uh, dis, uh, discriminate the right from wrong. And then they explain the path that is uh, the six paramitas as well as uh, ten thousands of uh, practices or actions practiced by the host of bodhisattvas. So we practice the, on the same path that was treaded by the host of bodhisattvas and great masters from the past. And they rely on the meaning of the true characteristic of the Dharma. Hinayana or Mahayana, in fact, the teaching is common on the um, emptiness as well as the suffering, the truth of suffering. Uh, and uh, impermanent suffering, emptiness, no self, and extinction. They are able to save all sentient beings who commit infractions in other additions, Tibetan version as well as 
as well as uh, the uh, Xuanzang's version and uh, the Qianlong Emperor's Tributaka of this particular version translated by Kumar Jiva, it included those and the six practices or actions that is a complete uh, reverse of the six parameters, uh, such as a stinginess that is uh, then contrary to generosity and so on. Commit infractions. What does that mean? It means those people who broke their vows and it means that the Mahayana teaching can save all the sentient beings who've broken their vows before with great compassion. According to the mind mirror, it says that the five the five greatest sins as well as uh, the five greatest sins cannot be recovered in the Hinayana te uh, teaching, but uh, in Mahayana teaching, you can then purify all of the previous sins by uh, practicing Mahayana uh, confession. And in meditation on the Samadabhadra Sutra, it also said that for the kind of people who've broken their vows of uh, uh, the pratika of the uh, of the lay practitioner's vow of uh, the uh, pratyavoksha vow and uh, the vows of uh, shamanas and so on, then you can still practice accordingly to purify your previous uh, wrong. Uh, previous misdeeds. Anyone aspiring to purify negative karma through confession should recite Mahayana Sutras with diligence, contemplate on the ultimate truth. So this is the method that is stated in the meditation on Samadabhadra Sutra. What other capabilities it has or merit? The next one, it says that uh, they can render afraid the Maras, the heretics, and uh, those attached to desire for such kind of people, such as Maras and heretics, and uh, uh, those mundane beings who have great attachment to desire, in fact, they are not afraid of anything else, but after chanting the Mahayana Sutra, or studying the Mahayana Dharma, then they will feel afraid and uh, generate renunciation from this world. They are praised by in fact, there are people who have great attachment to desire. They not only do not fear the suffering of samsara, they mistakenly take samsara as happiness. The other day, I, I met someone from outside, uh, maybe outside. Do you understand what outside means? Maybe I mean the aliens. And I asked him, how do you feel about uh, this li uh, about living uh, in the in in this world? And he said, "I think living in this world is very good. It's very happy." And I thought to myself, "Well, if there were a place that is truly very happy to live in, then why bother to?" Aspire to reborn in samsara uh, in uh, in pure in pure land. I could have just move there instead of moving to pure land. But I think the way he said that is he did not understand the truth of suffering of samsara. According to the way of the Bodhisattva, it says that alas, indeed, that living beings carried on the flood of bitter pain. However terrible their plight may be, do not perceive they suffer so. So maybe they feel very happy today, but when impermanence downs and uh, 
how would you feel? In fact, suffering is doesn't have a single hair of happiness. Samsara doesn't have a single hair of happiness. And uh, that's the teaching that it gives by the Buddhas of the three times, not only by the Medicine Buddha Tathagata. So all the Buddhas praise such kind of teaching. And until here, it talks about the ability or the capacity of uh, Dharma, of Mahayana Dharma. So the next part, it talks about what is Dharma offering. From this part, it talks about what is Dharma offering by the Medicine King Buddha. And he said that one who hears such sutras, such as uh, Vimalakirti Sutra and so on, such kind of uh, Mahayana Sutra, and if they can devoutly understand, accept, and maintain, and read, and recite them, will with power of skillful means explain them clearly and with discriminative understanding for sentient beings. You need the skillful means without Without such a skillful means, you won't be able to uh, then help the sentient beings. When some of our Sangha members first came to Larungar, they really want to turn the wheel, wheel of Dharma. They really want to give the teachings of the Dharma, but they don't have such ability yet. But after studying for a long period of time, they have such ability, they no longer wanting to turn the wheel of Dharma anymore. And there are the ones who after having the ability and have the eagerness, but they cannot find disciples and they also suffer because of that. And for the kind of people who then have the ability, who also practice well and uh, at that time, they feel that they don't want to turn the wheel of Dharma anymore because they really enjoy their own practice and uh, they enjoy such uh, 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 quietude through the practice and they don't want to go into big cities to turn the wheel of Dharma and they don't want to uh, retrogress from the path because of the chaos and uh, the uh, all the kinds of uh, uh, busy, big city chaos. In fact, if your area or your region needs some uh, Dharma teachers, and there are people who told me many times that I really want to I really want to then uh, become an abbot of this particular monastery that people offered to me. This is a place that they, they offered to me. Can I please go there and uh, manage that center? And I will turn the wheel of Dharma. In fact, this is really not that easy. At the beginning, it's, it seems easy, but uh, to maintain a monastery is, in fact, not that easy at all. At first, um, maybe you take over this monastery for a while, and uh, after a while, will you make some uh, progress and then people notice your uh, such progression they will take they want to take it over other people want to take it over uh, Kempo told me that over here teaching feels sutras and shastras it, it, it doesn't feel like it's very difficult but when I go outside it's very difficult to gather people to listen to the teaching and very difficult to then give even a few classes of teaching People feel that as long as I'm healthy, I can give teachings whenever and however I want. 
So I have the five perfections. I can have all the uh, all the followers that I need, all the students that I need. But this is really not as simple as you imagined it to be. Maybe you have the perfect teacher, but you don't have the perfect place. Even if you have the perfect place, it's very difficult to find the perfect uh, subordinates. And <laughs> even if you have the perfect subordinates, it's very difficult to find the perfect time because people need to go to work. That's, that is very honest. In fact, this is how I feel whenever I go outside. Uh, nowadays, I feel that whenever giving teachings over here, it's very easy. For 30 or 60 classes, it's not difficult. And we've already reached a 65th class. But uh, when I go outside, it's so difficult. It's very difficult to even arrange for five or six classes. So sometimes the the five perfections of uh, listening to the Dharma can very can be very difficult to, to gather such perfect causes and conditions. Even sometimes when I give the teaching, uh, when I even want to go to uh, when I want to give the profound teachings, the students require me to give rather easy and simple teachings. So. It's very important to, to have the power of skillful means. You need lots of causes and conditions. So for the new Dharma teachers, for the new Dharma teachers to be, if you do not study for 10 or 20 years, at least, if you just become a Dharma teacher right away, as much as you're so eagerly of giving teachings, of giving teachings of a letter to a good friend or so, maybe you're very eagerly to give the teaching, but uh, the students, they're eagerly of uh, not wanting to listen. Oh. So, to give teachings to uh, the session beings and uh, explain clearly as well as uh, with discriminative understanding for the session beings, this is because the person will be maintaining and protecting the Dharma. In fact, what we're doing is protecting the Dharma of Tathagata, the true Dharma of Tathagata. So the true offering is making Dharma, Dharma offering to listen to the mentoring class, tutoring class, dis participating in the discussion groups, listening to any classes are considered as offering of the Dharma. Nowadays, the people would uh, wrap uh, lots, of, uh, lots of the Dharma offering symbols in their katas and continuously bowing to me. They would think that is making offering. In fact, the true offering is reading, is chanting, is reciting the sutra. Lots of people get up really early in the morning, and then they would practice in such a way. I feel very happy for all of those. Nowadays, we're uh, in summer season over here, and uh, uh, it is really it is, in fact, quite easy and pleasant to get up early in the summer. And when it comes in the winter, it's really cold and it's dark, and you don't want to get up early anymore. When I watch some videos of Ponsukur and uh, Dharma Assembly uh, video recordings, and I often think to myself that is the great ability of great bodhisattva because nowadays such opportunity to gather large crowd to uh, listening and practicing the Dharma is getting less and less. Uh, 
Majority of the people feel that as long as I'm eager to, then the external conditions will be fulfilled naturally, and, and they will just take it very uh, willingly. And um, I myself, in fact, think it is really not that easy because you need such great merit as well as uh, the conditions to be filled. Uh, just as a teacher's teacher who uh, whose uh, translator died and uh, he had to wander around in, in the on the Tibetan plateau without giving any teachings. So for some of our uh, our Sangha, our Dharma teachers who go out, maybe you, you don't have such, uh, maybe you'll be like the the uh, guru of Atisha and wander around in large cities selling stock and uh, uh, making living in such a way without giving any Dharma teachings. Anyhow, this is called the offering of the Dharma. On one hand, our studying, contemplation, and uh, the practice of the Dharma, it generates great merit, and it is very meaningful and valuable. I think previously I also quoted from the Sutra of the Ten Chakras of Earth Store, where it says that in 10,000 million kalpas, a wise man diligently practice meditation and obtain the supreme wisdom of enlightenment, yet this merit cannot compare to that of protecting the Dharma. So the merit that generates from practicing um, meditation and obtain supreme wisdom of enlightenment, but this merit cannot be compared with protecting the dharma, the truth of the Tathagata, taught by the Tathagata. So for those of you, do not belittle yourself and think that I am merely a lay practitioner. I only need to make my own living comfortable. You should not consider and think in such a narrow-minded way. You should not keep such a petty-minded um, aspiration. Rather, you should make a great aspiration to protect the Dharma. And furthermore, uh, when one practices as is explained in the Dharma, one will be in accordance with the 12 factors of causes and conditions, transcend the heterodox view, and attain forbearance of birthlessness of the Dharma. There is definitely no self and no sentient beings and without retribute to results of cause and conditions. There will be such a person, uh, no disagreement, no contention, and uh, transcendence of all qualities of self. So the person such kind of person will then transcend the 12 factors of causes and conditions. And as a good practitioner, they can accept all kinds of causes and conditions, all kind of phenomena uh, that appears. They, ex they have great acceptance without having to fight for how the external phenomena would appear in front of them or manifest. That is by practicing in accordance with the 12 factors of cause and conditions. And then the next part talks about the four things to rely or four things not to rely. The first one is that uh, the Mahayana practice or the Mahayana teaching should be relied uh, should uh, should rely on the meaning of the Mahayana teaching, but not the words. It doesn't matter how flowery and how flattering your words are. The words is like the finger that's pointing to the moon, but it is not the moon. It is not the truth. So words are merely a tool, a skillful means. So therefore, you should not rely on such words. And the second one is that you will rely on wisdom, not knowledge. We should rely on the wisdom of non-dual wisdom of the bodhisattvas, but not relying on our discriminative thoughts and knowledge and uh, uh, such, uh, such kind of uh, uh, smartness, so to speak. And they should rely on the sutras of comprehensive meaning or the ultimate meaning and not rely on the sutras of uh, incomplete meaning. So you should not rely on the incomplete meaning or the relative meaning. You should rely on the comprehensive meaning, such as it is taught through Vimalakirti Sutra as well as Lotus Sutra. There are 
teachings in Buddhism where it says that a killing of father and killing of mother will lead you to liberation. In fact, uh, such words, uh, such words, uh, then lead to the meaning that is ultimate. So you should then first understand what the ultimate meaning is without relying on the incomplete meaning. Fourthly, they will rely on the Dharma and not rely on a person. It is important to rely on the teaching but not rely on the person. They, there are people who said that is that um, Tibetan Buddhism is completely wrong, or rather the Tantra and the teachings is completely wrong because, because as it is stated by the Buddha that you should not rely on a person, you should not rely on a guru, but that is wrong because you're not relying on the person, you're relying on the guru's understanding and teaching of the Dharma. Therefore, it is still relying on the Dharma. Also, if you do not rely on the person first, how could you receive the Dharma that is taught through him? So, so it talks about the four things to rely on. And then the next one talks about it. they will be in accord with the characteristics of the Dharma. You have to then follow the uh, the Dharma, the, in accordance with the characteristics of the Dharma. And once you understand such characteristic of the Dharma, without anywhere that is entered, without any refuge, uh, without anywhere that is entered, that is, th uh, that means it is without alaya. Some commentaries it is explained like that, and without any reg uh, without any refuge, it means. Oh, in fact, without any refuge it means uh, without alia and uh, without anywhere that is entered, uh, then it is uh, through the ultimate aspect, uh, and uh, it means uh, to destroy the alia. All the alia of uh, mundane beings it can be transformed into wisdom, because it, the foundation of uh, Ignorance is alia. So destroying al by destroying alia, then you'll be able to attain uh, wisdom. So ignorance will be thoroughly extinguished, and hence process will be thoroughly uh, extinguished. So thus birth will be thoroughly extinguished, and hence old age and death will be thoroughly extinguished, just as in the 12 dependence is then going backwards. So. Once you have no birth, then there is uh, no aging and uh, death either. In such a way, if one performs such a contemplation, the 12 factors of cause and conditions will be without the characteristics of uh, being exhausted. There is nothing that is that has such um, characteristic. And once you do not have such characteristic, how can you generate a view? So you do not, you should not have any view of emptiness or view of characteristics. And once attaining such kind of understanding, this is the most supreme offering of uh, the Dharma. According to a sutra, it is says that a Brahmin went to a relative's home, and uh, the relative was not home. So while waiting for the relative, uh, the Brahmin then asked for a, tech, a, a book to read, a sutra to read. And uh, he went into the forest and started reading about the sutra on the 12 causes and conditions. The first time reading this book, he did not understand at all. And so he then flipped through and uh, read the second time. He then uh, understood a, a part of it and then he uh, he then understood this text and uh, he re uh, he attained the realization of non-self and he thought to himself that he had taken everything completely wrong 
um, and uh, after understanding such a way, he's, he gave the teaching of the 12 dependence or 12 factors of causes and conditions to others as well. So the 12 factors of causes and conditions uh, is a, an, a, very, a very important teaching in the teachings of the Buddha. In within the Hinayana as well as Mahayana teachings, in fact, this is one of the most important teaching uh, is one of the, the important teachings as well. Another aspect, uh, another lesson that we can learn from this te this story is that sometimes through the first time reading a book, we do not understand it at all, or sometimes uh, it takes two or three or many reads, you'll be able to understand. In, in a book I wrote, it is an interview of 125 university students. Um, back in the 90s, there were a very small number of university students. But nowadays, uh, there are many, many more university students uh, nowadays. No, I'm, I'm only joking. The university students or graduates are, are still quite great nowadays. There are people who uh, enter into Dharma because of the reading of the Heart Sutra or the Diamond Sutra or by meeting someone uh, on the train and so on. So we, through different kind of causes and conditions, through different kind of textbooks and uh, through different kind of people we meet uh, halfway through, we in fact got in touch or made connections to the Dharma path. And although this is not the age of uh, attaining fruition anymore, but still we are on the path of the Dharma. At least we are spared from the consequences that you may have chose for yourself, uh, such as um, such as committed suicide and uh, maybe uh, have severe depression. Anyhow, for those of you who've gained lots of profit from the Dharma, I think whenever you have the opportunity, if you can offer the teachings that you've studied and that benefits you, then you can spread it to others. You can then share the teachings of uh, what you've learned to others, uh, even a person who's sitting beside you on the commute um, and uh, so on. And whatever you say, whatever kind of uh, um, uh, teaching that you share with others could be considered as Dharma offering as well. And maybe the person sitting beside you would attend arhathood first before you. It, I'm stressing on the point that you don't necessarily having to have a center first to be able to benefit others, to be able to make Dharma offerings and propagating the Dharma. We don't really have to um, propagate the Dharma just like making a propagation of something that is not true. In fact, if the Dharma is not beneficial, why would we propagate the Dharma at all? We are propagating it and we're disseminating the good teaching only because it's good, only because it is beneficial and positive to other people's life. Let's just think about it. Some practitioners, they may be poor, but they're very happy. They live a very happy life. And there are people who are quite rich, but without being a, a practitioner, they suffer a lot in their mind. Sometimes when I encounter such people, I really feel that there are people who are rich, and there are people who have uh, lots of power. Uh, when I when I am introduced to such kind of people, I often think to myself, such people must ha carry lots of pressure and uh, lots of uh, anxiety. Lots of arrogance uh, and anxiety and uh, um, pride. Is residing in lots of uh, modern people's heart, and uh, we need the Amrita uh, medicine of the Dharma of the Dharma in this age more than ever. So that's something that you should all contemplate upon. 
And then, to continue, the Buddha told Indra and said that when Prince Munkanapi heard this dharma from the Medicine King Buddha, he attained the forbearance of compliance. So, forbearance of compliance in the commentary, some said that this is a stage that is attained before Bhumi, and some of the commentary stated that this is the fourth Bhumi attainment. Anyhow, after listening to it, the Prince Moon Canopy uh, attained something and received uh, some benefit. So forbearance of compliance at that time, he must be rather quite compliant and no longer arrogant than how he may used to be because he was a prince of the universal monarch anyhow. Uh, taking off his jeweled robe and bodily ornaments such as necklace and his earrings and bracelets, all of them. And then he offered them to the Medicine King Buddha and said to him, that world honored one, after your Nibbana, <laughs> when you die or after you die, I will practice the offering of the Dharma and defend the correct Dharma. Because when the Buddha is uh, still abiding in this world before entering into Nirvana, uh, the, the Prince Moon Canopy said that when you are still abiding in this world, uh, you're, you're the one who's propagating. But after you pass into Parinirvana, then I will practice the offering of the Dharma. Just as Ponsok Rinpoche said that when I, when I, after I die, uh, maybe some of my disciples who have great devotion towards me, they will still live in Laronga. So similarly, the moon canopy prince also said to the Buddha, saying that after you, your nirvana, I will practice the offering of the Dharma and defend the correct Dharma. So please use your numinous charisma and penetration, uh, numinous penetration compassionately so that I will be able to subjugate the vengeful maras and cultivate practices of bodhisattva. Please bless me, give me lots of blessings so that I can then subjugate the vengeful maras. Because at that time, the Tathagata has already passed uh, into Parinirvana, and then without your blessing, I will be very alone. Therefore, please grant your blessing so that I can subjugate the vengeful maras uh, during the propagation of your correct dharma as well as cultivate the practices of bodhisattva to generate a bodhicitta, uh, and a great compassion. In fact, making such kind of aspiration to the masters, to, uh, to the noble ones, in fact, this kind of aspiration is crucial. When Ponsu Rinpoche was alive, I didn't dare to make such aspiration uh, out loud, but uh, in my heart, that is the kind of aspiration I made within my heart. The good teacher that um, the good teacher that you uh, you have, although as much as you want to be with such a good teacher forever, such a good teacher is also, it, it will enter into nirvana, will die eventually. So it is quite important to make such aspiration about knowing this uh, by then uh, propagate the Dharma. In fact, uh, building stupas and how to protect the uh, the the bodily uh, uh, the the bodily uh, relics is not as important as protecting the relics of the Dharma teaching. <coughs> so. <coughs> Knowing the profound thoughts in the prince's mind, the Medicine Buddha made his prediction, at the very end, you will defend the Dharma city. According to 
The treatise on the common end of married good deeds, it says that material giving is like a lamp, which can only light up a small room, while giving of the Dharma is like the sun that can illuminate the whole world. So protecting anything else is not as important or as great as if you can protect the Dharma city or defend the Dharma city. You can make a stupa. Uh, you can then protect the relics, but such kind of merit is just like a small light in small light that can only light up a small room. But if you can make the offering of the Dharma, if you can give the Dharma, then it the merit is just like the sun that can illuminate the whole world. You need to differentiate what is more important to protect the Dharma teaching taught by the Tathagata and protect the lineage teaching by reciting, listening, and giving such teaching is of more importance than anything else material. The Buddha told the heavenly emperor, saying that Prince, uh, Prince Moon Canopy then he saw the purity of Dharma, hearing the Buddha bestow a prediction of a future Buddhahood on him. He then developed faith and left home after, uh, uh, left home and uh, uh, attain, uh, and uh, after cultivating good Dharma with ex exertion for not very long, he attained the five numinous penetrations, and uh, very soon he became a Bodhisattva. He attained Dharani and unending eloquence. So at that time, during the abiding of uh, the Tathagata, the Prince Moon can uh, Canopy attained such, uh, uh, such realization. And then after Nirvana of that Buddha, using the power of numinous penetration, Dharani, the eloquence that he had attained, he disseminated the wheel of Dharma that Medicine King Buddha had turned for a full 10 short kalpas. In fact, in some commentaries, uh, in some translations, it says it's, it is uh, for 10 medium kalpas. So he, uh, he propagated such teachings for a long period of time. And uh, uh, at that time, uh, they had long lifespans. Not only they made offering for five medium kalpas, and uh, he gave uh, teachings. He made offering with his father for five kalpas. He made offering with his brothers for five kalpas. And uh, he then turned the wheel of Dharma for 10 medium kalpas. So that's 20 medium kalpas together. That's a long period of time. But uh, people's life, uh, our mundane people's life nowadays is quite short. And five years pass by, and another five years pass by very quickly. Through his diligent practice and exertion in defending the Dharma in that lifetime, Moon Canopy Bhikshu converted a million kodis of people. So within just a short period of lifetime, because of his exertion and diligence, he then uh, converted a million kotis of people who became irreversible in their quest for Anuttarak Samyok Sambodhi, and uh, 14 uh, ayutas of people generated the profound inspiration to become Shravakas and Pratika Buddhas. Did I explain it correctly? So 14 Nayutas of people. According to the Tibetan version, it says it's 10 Nayutas. Is it 10? 10 Nayutas of people generated the profound inspiration to become Shravakas and Pratika Buddhas. Immeasurable sentient beings gained birth in the heavens. Um, in the Tibetan version, it says that uh, to they gained birth in the three higher realms, uh, such as Ashura and uh, human and uh, celestial beings. Uh, but over here, it says that they gained birth in the heavens or in the celestial being in the celestial realm. So 
the moon canopy bodhisattva. And then the Buddha said, Indra was not the prince jewel canopy of that time an unusual person. Do not take him as someone normal or someone mundane. As of now, he was attained. He has attained Buddhahood and is entitled Jewel Mirage Tadagata. Those thousand princes became the thousand Buddhas of Bhadrakalpa or the all the Kalpa of all good. The first achieved Buddhahood as. Krakuchandra, that's the first one, and the last one, the last one will be the Tadagata named Roka or Ruchi. That's the last Tadagata of the 1,000 Buddhas. In fact, the moon canopy was I myself. So that is Shakyamuni Buddha. When he was Moon Canopy Princess, he made such great offering, and he made such great practice. Thus, Heavenly Emperor Indra, you should understand this essential point. Out of all the offerings, the offering of Dharma excels all. It is supreme, incomparable. In Tibetan version, it has more than most so-so-so. It has uh, many more descriptions of uh, its supremacy of the Dharma offering. So in Tibetan it says uh, the greatest, uh, the most supreme, the most uh, noble, and uh, most uh, uh, so many more descriptions. Therefore, Indra, you should use the offering of the Dharma to make offering to the Buddhas. In fact, making offering of uh, material is really good. Making offering to the Buddha, to the Bodhisattva, to the uh, your guru. If you can make offering, that's great. And uh, the best way is to make offering of uh, Dharma offering. <laughs> Yesterday, someone made a confession to me with tears in their eyes, saying that I would never make material offering again. I will only make a Dharma offering from now on. I will I only get to know the supreme, uh, how supreme the Dharma uh, offering is till now. So that ends, concludes the 13th chapter. In the Tibetan uh, translation, it has 12 chapters in total, uh, which combines the Bodhisattva chapter and Disciple chapter together. Uh, in the Chinese translation, it, ha it, it, it is divided into two. And uh, this 13th chapter and 14th chapter is also, uh, com uh, also combined together in uh, also uh, combined together in the Tibetan version. So Liu, uh, so Zhu Qian's version as well as Xuanzang's version is very similar to the Kumara Jiva's version, but uh, the Tibetan version is very similar to the Sanskrit version. So I would like to make such note because the content is very much similar, except uh, the uh, how it is divided into different chapters are, are, uh, are different. Uh, back in 2017, I, in fact, looked back into the uh, Tibetan version and the Chinese version. I thought to myself, is it going to have lots of differences? But uh, later on, oh, I realized that the content is very much similar, except how the chapters are divided. Some of the some of the uh, places have some differences, and uh, maybe the translations are done through different uh, copies. So there are different copies, different editions, and different understanding through the different translators. So there are some differences, and we should we should then accept such small, minor differences, as long as there is no major differences. So we conclude this chapter today. And uh, we have one chapter left, and we'll give the we we'll have the class on next Tuesday.
大师傅，本可能讲那个下个礼拜这堂课的时候，做一个简单的汇报。Tuesday we'll have a very simple offering, which then、um, will conclude and、uh, will celebrate the 66 classes that we've had,、uh, that completes the. Entire teaching of the Malakirti Sutra. For those of you who listen to this teaching and who then have、uh, groups to listen together, then you can prepare maybe a candy and a soft drink.、Uh, over here, you should not buy much stuff; otherwise, we have too much.、Uh, but we will then make a short talk offering to. Uh, show our gratitude towards the, the protectors who protected us to completely finish our teaching smoothly, and、uh, gratitude towards the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas' blessings through the practice of、um, uh, ring of blessings of uh, uh, seven line prayer.